<laughs> this meeting is being recorded. There it is. What's going on, good people? It's me, it's me, it's the K to the C. No to the world is the world's greatest weight loss expert. And I got my bricks with me. I got Lee Money in the building, the queen of Memphis. Please don't play with her. And I got my girl Liz Roundtree in the building. And sure, we just go kick it. And we're just talking about leaving behind and, and some of the stuff we're going to leave behind in 2022. So my first question, I want to talk about wins. What were some of your biggest wins this year? Mm, that's a good question. I did. You know what I did this year? I, I believe. Okay. I started taking more risks and everything didn't pan out, but there was some things that did and my life is better for it. Risk. What, what, what was some of your biggest risks? Um, investing in myself. I started taking, you know, spending money to to learn more, like I'm not talking about going back to school. I'm talking about taking classes at the real estate office or the, the MLS. I'm talking about taking classes online from home. There's just stuff that I wanted to learn about. I remember you telling us, maybe this, this was a long time ago. Okay. You said that you go to work from this to that. These hours that you're not working, it's your time. You should right. be doing something for you. Yes. So. And I love did, that. And how did it make you feel to even venture out and doing stuff outside of your normal? It felt good. It felt good. It was scary at first. Mm -hmm. At first, it was scary, a little bit out of place. And I felt a little discombobulated, but I just kept going. I just kept going. I kept going. And then after one thing was over, oh, I wanted to know something else, you know? That's awesome. So. That's awesome. Liz, what about you? Repeat the question, Kenya. Biggest wins. My biggest win this year would be my health. Okay. I was suffering from something for a long time. Long. So in, <laughs> long time. So in January, I um had major surgery. And so for me, that was a big win because that that suffering ended. So that was my biggest win this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Number two, shoot, my number two question for you. What, let me see, was there a huge hurdle that you cleared this year that kind of seemed insurmountable at the time? Did you clear a huge hurdle? I can't name off the top. What about you, Liz? Hurdles. A huge hurdle. A huge hurdle. Hurdle. Was it stepping out on faith on certain things like a relationship, I'm gonna, Lee? <laughs> I'm going to use uh, my daughter as an example. Okay. I am a huge mama bear. Huge, no. huge mama bear. <laughs> so this year, my biggest hurdle has been realizing that she can fight her own battles. And that I don't have to fight everybody for her, that she can handle it. Wow. And I just need to be back here if she needs me for support, to be support and not to be out front. Because I could I could be crazy. <laughs> Look, I wasn't even expecting that That's else, awesome. but when you said it, it was like a hallelujah moment. That's a big hurdle for me because I feel like I feel like I have to have my fingers on everything she's doing. Not in the way, but right. mama bear protective and i'm like she turned 26 this month Ooh. repeat that age again please 26 so you just decided to take your hands off of that almost 30 year old woman it was huge to not see her as i have to take care of her and i'm not even talking about financial i mean like just everything that she's not, she's not a baby. She's not a kid. She's my child, but she's not. I don't what have to do that anymore. What was the big epiphany moment to where you were kind of like, man, I need to back up off of her. She got this. She don't even need me. 
part of it was our relationship, the dynamics of our relationship okay. and things that happened that I'm like, who is she talking to? And you know how sometimes, I mean, let's just be honest. Let's Kids can be a trip. And when you get the urge to put your hands on your children, uh-huh. and you're like, wait, she's not 13. She's 26. She might hit you back. <laughs> That's major, yeah. Liz. This is major. Okay? So it's I, like, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So I'm like, why are you so mad? She's grown. She wants, you know, my older brother used to tell me, I go through all that I went through so that you don't have to go through it. He said, I'm trying to give you the lessons for free. He said, now, if you want to go ahead and stick your hand in the fire, go ahead. He said, but I'm trying to give it to you for free. So hands off. Like, the grown woman. Can I mess with you and ask you a question? Because you know I'm going to ask you a question. Now, do you have people in your life who have hovered over you in a sense? Never? Okay. How about you, Lee? Absolutely. Absolutely. My mother, she did when I was a very young child. But I resisted. I rebelled. Okay. And uh, it seems like that didn't work for me when I got older, when I needed her, she, she kind of felt me like Liz said that she realized I wanted mm-hmm. to be my own independent person. And my mom right. realized that and she, she backed off, but she was always there when I needed her. And how old were you then? When your mom um, I think maybe about 23, 24, cause I already had kids by then. So, so she was still trying to mother you even though right. you had kids. Right. And you always provide that support and let them know that you're there, but no longer do I lead. I just mm-hmm. stand back. That's that awesome. was huge for me this year. That's a, I'm like, that's dope, though. That's dope. <laughs> and because, you know, I know Kennedy. Kennedy, you don't want to you don't want to never admit it, but she's really she's like a different extension of you, but she is you, but just in a different <laughs> form of you. And I think that's why y'all kind of butt heads because it's kind of like Liz versus Liz, but just a different version of Liz. Different version, different, <laughs> different version. And she's very stubborn and focused on certain things. No! And- <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where she gets that from. I have no idea. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I put that on her daddy. <laughs> her daddy. I put that on her daddy. Yeah, she, she's very stubborn and fer- focused, but then there's other things where she's like, Mom, Mom, can you help me? And I was running. And I was like, wait, no, no, stop no. it. I was running. I was running. What you need? What you need? I got it. Yeah. So there's still a part of her, and she won't admit it. So Kennedy, if you watch it, we know you ain't going to admit it. So there's still a part of her who still needs a, needs that that part of you yes. that you're kind of drawing back and not giving her anymore. So it's kind of like, okay, Ma, all right, I don't need this, but as soon as somehow, let me go reach for my mom. Right. And so, unfortunately, I lost my mom at 22, 23, right before I had Kennedy. So I didn't have that. And I think I overdid it with her. So we're learning. We're learning. We're learning our new roles because these are new roles for us. Love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Now, let me ask you this. What have you learned about yourself in 2022? What have you learned about you? Because we know, look, we know y'all got it going. Oh, um, but is there anything that you picked up on this year that you probably didn't even pay attention to in previous years? I have a couple of things. What you got? I learned that I can be a mean person, okay. not mean hearted, okay. but mean in the sense of, I don't take junk, Kenya. I don't take no junk from anybody. Okay. And I think previously I just kept my mouth closed mm. between the ages of 23 and maybe 40. That's a long time. That's a long time. I let it slide. And now I'm calling people on their stuff. Okay. And and, and because people are in my circle and I used to it, it's like, I'm the issue, but I'm not. 
I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. So I've learned that I can, I don't know if mean is the right word, but it's not mean. It's just it's just you not allowing people to run over you, run over you and use you anymore. And 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 not saying anything, right? That part, not not speaking up for myself. And people are not used to that. So I'm just like, because I don't bother people. I realize I live in my little bubble. I don't bother people. I don't reach out. I don't create drama. I don't draw drama. So if you cross the line with me, I'm going to speak on it. What so was like, the, straw, the straw that broke the camel's back on that? Because you're talking a lot of years. You're talking about almost two decades of not saying nothing. Enough is enough. I don't think it was one thing. I think it was people were getting too comfortable because I, I'm the, even in my previous employment, some kind of way I always ended up being mama bear. And as mama bear, you can always depend on her, but you can always walk away and turn your back and still go back. So I think it was just a, a all of the things that, you know, your health, you being sick and suffering and then having surgery and seeing who showed up for you. Right. Then after surgery, people still depending on you, but still not offering you anything in return. Wow. So just being empty and tired and enough is enough. So yeah, that now, wrong with that. My, my rule now is, you know, I was always the first to give. Mm-hmm. I had this conversation this morning. Before this period in my life, when I meet people, I meet you, you already have 100 points with me. Okay. I give you the benefit of the doubt. You already have 100 points. Okay. And then as things happen, that goes down. Now, no, if you're not giving me first, mm-hmm. and I know that sounds selfish. No, it's I not. That you, I need to see that I'm going to get something out of this relationship. And it's not materialistic. I'm talking about emotional support because I give that so right. now I, I don't I'm not the first to give it I withhold that until I see what's in it for me that's reciprocity because I start people off at zero I don't start you at 100 and then let you whittle it away no you you gotta earn me you gotta I didn't understand me. that before yeah. Yeah, you gotta you gotta earn me, you gotta you gotta earn my trust. And again, this is not gonna happen within 10, 15, 20 days. This is gonna take years. Years. And that's why I always preach to everybody, you gotta see everybody in every season of their lives and see if they if they're built for that wealth. Right. Are you, are you built for the cold? Are you built for the heat? <laughs> when things are not going as well, how do you how do you operate? How do you work? Is there still integrity there? So, yeah. so yeah. How about you? how about you, Lee? What have you learned about you this year? A couple of things. The first thing was that I don't like people to put me in a box. Okay. Um, I hate that too. Go ahead. And then I learned that sometimes I need to be more humble. Okay. Because one thing with uh, my relationship. I've been single for so long. Okay. And it's hard when you've been single to let other people speak. It's hard letting them, you know, especially a man that's ready to do whatever he needs to do. Were you not and ready? For, were you not ready for that? Was I not ready for it? Um, okay. It wasn't that I was ready. I wanted it. It was on my list. It was something I needed, right? Okay. But I didn't know how to receive it because I had not been in the practice of receiving. Got so it. I had to learn how to humble myself. I had to, I'm still learning. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but um, I needed to, you know, realize that sometimes it's okay to let somebody else do some things for you. It's okay to be a lady. It's okay. Um, it's not going to take away from who I am, a strong woman, right. by letting a man be a man. It's not. So I'm working on this process. Mm-hmm. And there's something I realized that, you know, it's okay. And that's awesome. And I know we have like gabillions of gabillions of women who follow uh, this page or pages. And I think that was epic because 
we're the only ones as a race of people who struggle with that. White folks don't struggle with it. Asian folks don't, man, don't struggle with it. Uh, Latin people, Hispanic folks don't struggle with that. But I think a lot of times, for some strange reason, we just butt heads when really we just need to hug up and love up on each other and just be like, okay, if everybody has the mentality of what can I do for you? I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to harm you. I just want to make you better. And both people came from that same perspective. Everything will just be beautiful every day, just about up every week. Now, you're still going to have some bumps in the road, but at, at the end of the day, if 80% of the time you're good versus 20% of the time you're not, you still won. Right. Absolutely. So my question is, what are some of the things or what one thing, what one or two things do you feel like you need to leave behind in 2022? What do you need to leave behind? What do you need just, you know, I always see that that little picture of that little lady stepping up from one year to the another with a little bag in hand. Leaving her bag behind. <laughs> she always got some stuff behind her. What, what stuff do you need to leave behind in 2022 that has not served you? I'm definitely going to check into Liz's um, redrawing of boundaries. You know, um, it's okay to just redraw the boundaries and let people know, okay, you're not going to do this again. And I'm also going to have, because look, you're helping me, Liz. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you're like, helping me. Like, I, I didn't write some stuff down. But I mean, I got, I got a daughter that's 29 years old. Okay. okay. I have a daughter that's going to be 24. Okay. So. I need to learn how not to have my hands on everything because they are awesome women. They can do it on their own. They don't need me, but be there when they need me. That's all I need to do. I need to learn that. I haven't been able to accomplish it yet. Trust, oh, wait, wait, wait. trust that you did the job <laughs> God set out for you to do with them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So you've been going through the same thing Liz been going through. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Two guilty women. <laughs> <laughs> look, if, look, I, I'm on it. Like I, I, they call us helicopter parents. I'm one of them. I'm hovering. I'm hovering in the helicopter around my child all the time. Lee, land that helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> you did an awesome job, so you don't have to worry. Land it. Does, does that go back to? Not only trusting them, but really trusting the job that you did as a parent. Trusting the job you did as a parent. That is it. That's it. That's the key to it. And if you trust that you did the right thing, they got it. Okay. They got it. That's beautiful. And I'm, I'm going to give a little testimony. My yeah. daughter, just she just moved to Tallahassee. Does not know anybody. She doing her thing. Who that sound oh, like? That's Who awesome. That, got it. Who that sound like? Oh, <laughs> it sound like Liz. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> she got it. So it proud is, of her. It is the funny thing. You sounded so surprised, and I'm and I'm like, uh, dear, that's an extension of you. Damn. That you. So why are you surprised when essentially you right. doing, the, doing the same doing the same exact thing? Because exactly. again, she's an extension of yeah. who. So, so I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sorry, Lee. No, that was good. No, that was good. <laughs> now, now let me ask you this. Tell me some of the things that you're looking for and you're expecting in 2023. So I'll say, I didn't, I will say what I'm leaving behind and that leads into what I'm expecting. Okay. I am leaving fear and anxiety in 2022. That's beautiful. So in 2023, I'm expecting to hone my crafts and talents. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting prosperity. Yeah. I'm expecting a healthy, loving relationship. Yeah. It's yours. It's yours. We're going to touch and agree on that. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Lee? What are you expecting? What, what are some of the things you're 
expecting in 2023? I expect, I fully expect to smile more, laugh more, and love better because mm -hmm. that's just where I am. I, I, I feel like I was talking to my mother a few days ago. And she was like, you deserve this. I'm so happy for you. You yeah. deserve this. You did all the other stuff. This was meant for you. And I'm going to walk in there. I'm going to walk in there and accept it. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. Now, next question. Fill in the blank. Okay. In order for me to have an amazing 2023, and I'm going to have to do, and again, this is fill in, the, fill in the blank. I'm going to have to do more of blank and less of blank. In order for me to have an amazing 23, I'm going to have to do more of blank and less of blank. In order for me to have an amazing 2023, I'm going to have to stand in the light and be seen more. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to do less hiding and holding my gifts to myself. Amen. Amen. Lee. That's beautiful. <laughs> Lee. Lee, I'm going to read it back to you, Lee. In okay. order for me, uh, in order for me to have an amazing 2023, I'm going to have to do more of blank and less of blank. I'm going to have to do more listening, less talking. Because <laughs> okay. I, 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 I have been running things. Mm hmm I've been being mother, father, provider, everything. And now I'm on a team. Mm. So we're gonna run it together. Okay. That's so that's what I'm a, that's what my plan is. And and here's and here's the funny thing, because we're a team. So it's no different than what we do on the daily. It's, it's really no different because everybody has a job. Everybody has a responsibility. And all you have to really do is just carry that into your marriage. You got this. I got this. You got this. I got this. We're going to hold it down. And we good. And we rolling. We ain't traveling outside of ourselves. If I say I'm going to do this, this is my job. This is my role. If you say you're going to do this, I'm going to trust you to do this. Even though I used to do it, I'm going to trust you to do it because that's your role. And shoot, when we put our superpowers together, boom, we good. That's you said a word right there. That's, you said trusting. That's what yeah. it is. I need to do that. That's what it is. I need to do trusting more. Okay. All right, yeah. coach. You made it plain. You made it plain. Right, right. <laughs> well, well, I tell folks all the time, a relationship in business, there's no difference. Because when I was doing this, when I was holding this thing down by myself, I felt like the single mom. The single father. I felt like I had to do everything. Again, it's no different than being a solopreneur to where uh, you do the Facebook posts, you answer everybody in the DMs. You don't hire a marketing squad to do your stuff because you can just boost every post you can. You ain't got to do And it becomes tiring, but it becomes your role. But when you learn how to um, trust people, and you learn how to just, just give people their roles and just trust that they're going to do it, then you can flourish. Because for a long time, my business never blew up because my business could never grow bigger than I would allow it because I always had my hands on it. So the more you can take your hands up off of stuff, the, the better and bigger your stuff becomes. Just by trusting. Just by trusting. So last thing we're going to do, I'm going to give y'all the brag. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to brag. This is one of the things that I do with my brother. I'll have him do like a brag session. And the reason why I have him do a brag session is because I need for him to hear what he's accomplished. And I need for him to hear what he's done. Because sometimes we sleep on what we do and we don't acknowledge what we do. And, and when we say it, it's like, dang, I did do that, huh? So who wants to go first? Who wants to go first? So, go first. Okay, so the question is, on this brag session, why do you love you? 
and why do you appreciate you? I love me because I am resilient. I am loving. I am comforting. I am supportive. I am smart. I'm kind. I'm gentle. I'm amazing. Yes. All right. Yes. Amazing. All right. Buy that. Buy that and own that. I'm just saying. <laughs> How about you, Lee? Question is. Why do you love you? Why do you appreciate you so much? Brag on you. Okay. I love me because I can do anything I put my mind to. Sure can. I love me because everybody I touch in my circle benefits. From my glow. Yes. Keep going. I'm going to start right here on, on Cindy Hill. That's where I am. Right here on Cindy Hill, I'm going to start. So I love me because I contribute good things to everything I touch. So, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, look, so whenever you feel low, always come back to this episode and let that serve as a reminder of who you really are. And I want you to watch your, when you watch it back, watch your faces when you, you, you zone out and you allow yourself to express yourself when it comes to the love that you have for you. Because I think that's what really, I, I think that's what we really need to work on as, as a people. Saying it's okay that I'm good, that I'm great, that I'm awesome, that I'm amazing, and not having to apologize for sounding a certain way because you feel a certain way about yourself. You felt certain ways about people you weren't even supposed to feel a certain way about. <laughs> right. So why not love you? Why not pat yourself on the back? Why not encourage you? Why not appreciate what you've been through and came up out of? So that's what's up. So thank y'all for hanging out with me. Uh, for the people who are watching this now, thank you so much for being a part of our family. And, and again, we're here to inspire and motivate you. And I'm, I'm praying that it has, because I know it's simple as me, because I didn't realize uh, that, that I have some amazing ladies. I already knew it before, but I mean, y'all just take it to the next level. And I can't wait to see your next level. So thank y'all for hanging. And we're going to do this again. Thank next you, week. Coach. Yeah. Thank Love you. Y'all have a great one. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.